Okay, this is elementary audio tutorial number two. And just like the previous tutorial, I'll suggest that if you did not see the intro video that you start there. Um, I think that is the right place for getting the context for this video. Um, because today, like the last video, I just want to um, get kind of right up and running. So today we are going to take last week's synthesizer example and kind of nudge it around to uh, into like the shape of a MIDI controlled sampler. So jumping right in here, we are starting again at kind of like the hello world of elementary audio sample playback. And so you can see I've just got the requires up top, a bunch of file paths on my drive. And, you know, if you were to, <clears throat> if you were to run this on your computer, you'd have to change those paths to appropriate places on your disk. Um, then we've got the load event, and here we're going to render. So the highlight of today's video really is the el.sample node, and to the sample node you can pass a, a file path. And then the sample node is driven by a pulse train, a control signal that goes from 0 to 1, and then from 1 back down to 0. Um, and so if we just render this, we've got a kick once a second. And I'm going to share really quick, this is, this is a, a fun trick that I've been using when working in elementary myself, but in this background tab over here, I've got Nodemon running, which you can find on Google, but Nodemon is basically just a little uh, utility for watching your files as you're working on them and restarting Node. Um, but I can have Nodemon restart elementary if I do something like this. So this is what's running in the background. Um, and then every time this index.js file that we're working in changes, Nodemon will see it and kick off elementary again on the updated file. So super handy and a fun trick. Check it out. It's, it's called Nodemon. Good tool. Um, okay, so the other way that you can kind of manipulate samples in elementary so far, I mean, I anticipate there will be more options in the future, but um, I want to share another option real quick, which is the table node. So a very similar interface, the table you pass with a path property, um, except that this time instead of um, using a train, you'll use a phaser. So a table is just a lookup table, right? Like it'll load the, the data from that sample file into the, into the table buffer, and then you can pass in this kind of like normalized lookup position, which is what the phaser is. And so the phaser will go from zero to one, which is like start of table to end of table, and phaser will do it, let's go at like 10 times a second. Right, and then of course you can change the rate here, which will change the pitch of playback. Yeah. So, those are kind of the available options right now for sample playback in elementary. And um, table is really neat. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. But today, we're just going to focus on sample. So we've got kind of basic sample playback. Let's look at um, kind of lining this up on a, a MIDI keyboard. So I'm going to start by copying some code um, from my notes over here so I don't get it wrong. But the next step, the next few steps look a lot like last week. So we're going to start with this kind of voice of state, right? Um, oh, and I renamed some things. So, yeah. Okay, so in, you know, when we were working with the um, synthesizer, we just had an array of voices and then kind of an index for keeping track of the next voice that was due for allocation. And that's nice for a synthesizer because as you're pressing keys on the keyboard, you don't really care which voice necessarily is the one that's rendering, uh, you know, that key press for you. But with a sampler, um, and at least the sampler I want to build today, we do care about that, right? Like I kind of want my middle C to be mapped to my kick. I want my the, I want the D right next to it to be mapped to my clap, and then you know I want my hats kind of on the sharp keys sprinkled right next to them, things like that. 
Um, and so today, instead of using just a plain array, I have a map. And so this is a map. This is the like key mapping. So this is the MIDI note number to which I want to associate this chunk of state. And the state here is simple. You know, there's just the gate, which will be zero and one. That's our control signal. The path to load for the sample and then the key. And so the key that we're going to use here is just like the key, the, the description of the key I gave in the previous video. Um, this is just going to help elementary like precisely make updates between different render passes. So, right, okay, so this is, you know, MIDI note number 60, this is middle C, and then C sharp is my hi-hat, D is my clap, et cetera, et cetera. So, starting with that, now we need to pull in the update function, copy this again. Okay, so again, this should look a lot like last week's. We just have a update voice state function, and this is what we're gonna call when we get a MIDI event. So given a note on MIDI event, we're gonna see if the MIDI event is for a note number that we have mapped. So we check to see if the note number is in our voices map. If it is, we just set the gate value to one. Easy enough. Same thing here, if we get a note off for a note number that we care about, just turn its gate to zero, and that's that. So now, look at my notes. So now down here we can do kind of the same thing, uh, the same thing that we did last week as well, right? So core.onMIDI function E update voice state E. Right? And then all we have to do is render. So here we have, um, you know, updated voice state on MIDI events, and now we need to kind of render the whole voices struct um, into a single signal that we can pass to core.render. So to do that, I'm gonna write something that again looks a lot like last week. Um, I'm just gonna add together object.keysvoices.map function n. Okay, so object that keys will return us an array of all the keys in that map, so it'll look something like this, uh, etc. And then on that we're calling dot map function n, right? So in here n will be something like 60 or 61. Um, and so what I want to do is basically in here return we'll make a function called sampler voice and we'll pass it the, the chunk of state that is at voices n. Okay, easy enough. And then we will render core dot out, or sorry, we'll call core dot render without. And so now we just need the sampler voice function, right? And here we're basically gonna do what we started with, which is el.sample, path is voice.path, and then we need our gate signal. So for the gate signal, again, we're gonna make a constant value node, but here we wanna be really specific with the key. So we give it a key, and then we take the voice.gate. Yes. I think that's it. So save that and nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of it, right? I've got my MIDI keyboard next to me. I've got the keys mapped. C, D, C sharp, D sharp, E. And that's it. That's kind of everything I wanted to show you. But, you know, just like, I, again, like, um, similar to the last video, we have this structure now. And the structure is, you know, really simple. So from here, we can, we can take this in a ton of interesting places um, really quickly. So, for example, 
you know, we've got our output signal here, and we can, of course, just filter it. Um, and then maybe we'll do something like, uh, maybe I want each voice to have kind of uh, independent gain control. So I could do something like gain 1.0, and that clap is kind of loud relative to the others. Oops. So let's give that one a gain of 0 0.6. And then down here in our sampler voice, this kind of, you know, per voice DSP, multiply the voice.gain by the result of that sample. Yeah, um, so that's cool. And that's kind of like, you know, your, your per voice effects or your per voice DSP and then your aggregate DSP and then you can pass that out to core.render. Um, and so that's really all I wanted to show today, just kind of how to take the structure of the, the MIDI synth and kind of rework it just a little bit into the structure for a MIDI sampler. And from here, you can take this any number of ways. And so I want to give kind of one sort of uh, exercise for the reader sort of thing, uh, because I think obviously I could keep this video going forever, just noodling around with DSP ideas. But... Um, Really quickly, so for example, like, let's make this function called kickfx. And kickfx is just going to be, um, maybe I'm just going to distort it. Whatever, I, whatever signal I get, I'm just going to tan H it, just a little bit of saturation. And then maybe in here, we'll give each voice state kind of like, A little FX slot. By default, I'm not going to put anything, but maybe I'll put a function in here for the kick, right? And then down here, I could have my sampler voice do something like, you know, if voice.fx, then, oh, let's do something like this. So now what I have here is basically I, I wanted to, to kind of like end with a kind of a prompt um, for you to explore if you're interested. This is one way that I kind of just came up with off the top of my head for applying sort of per voice or per sample custom effects chains. And so, you know, as I'm rendering the sampler voice, we have our sample and our gate signal and we're multiplying by the, the voice's gain. But then if there's a FX function, we'll call it with that voice out and return that. Otherwise, we'll just return the voice out we just computed. And so now up here, you know, per voice, I can put anything I want here in this FX slot. So kick FX is just a tan H, but you know, whatever you want here, right? Delays, reverbs, uh, comb filters, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, and that's just, I guess I'll just leave it at that, right? Like that is one of the things, like one of the directions you could take this. Um, and let me, let me run that and see if it works because I didn't write that code ahead of time. Let me take off the, the filter. <laughs> actually can't tell in these earbuds. You tell me if that actually saturated a little bit. <laughs> the code is running, so I think it works. Anyway, all right, I'm going to stop this video here. Um, I'm at risk of rambling on too long, but this is what I wanted to work through today. Um, a simple, you know, MIDI-enabled sampler. We've got per voice DSP, we've got aggregate DSP, custom effects chains per voice. Um, it's pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. 
So, um, again, I will put a link to the Discord channel um, in the video description below. Jump in there if you have any questions, comments, um, you want to get if, or if you're interested and you want to get involved in the private beta. Um, public beta will be announced super soon. We're getting really close now, which I'm really excited about. Um, and so, at that time, there'll be a website and documentation available for everybody. Um, and I have a couple more videos planned. We'll do kind of a few things, but basically for the next video, I want to take this sort of structure and remove sort of the MIDI handling and inject kind of procedural, um, you know, sample pattern generation, which I think would be pretty fun. So yeah, stay tuned. More to come. I'll see you there.